It all started with silk. I'm at the Tomioka Silk Mill in Guma Prefecture, where many people say modern Japan was born. Have you ever wondered why Japan has such state-of-the-art technology creating some of the world's highest quality goods? Yeah, that's why I'm here, and that's why this place is a World Heritage Site. Now, the silk mill is no longer in operation, but it's the seed that has grown into the Japan that we know today. Today's tech in Japan is super fast, super cool, very efficient, and everywhere. Robotics is one of the many areas Japan has excelled, but it's also in everyday items like toilets and vending machines. The gaming and health industries are also at the top, and the tech in sushi shops is pretty good too. And yes, as I said in the beginning, it all started with silk. Before we go through the Mills East Cocoon Warehouse and facility areas, let's look at the Jobu region where Japan's Silk Road lies. Tokyo and Yokohama are Japan's biggest urban center and port, and the silk mill is located up the Tone River to the foothills of the Japanese Alps and Gunma Prefecture. The Jobu region straddles the Tone River. Takasaki is the largest city, and from here, we'll head to Shimonita and Tomioka, where the silk mill is located. This is where Japan's industrialization began. The mill ceased operations in 1987 and was declared a World Heritage Site in 2014 because of its significance and history to the country. This mill marks Japan's entry to a modern industrialized era, the point where a great desire for technological innovation spawned. Silk was the popular product made in Japan that the West craved the most, and the Jobu region was the perfect place to invest in since it already had the foundations for silk production. The mill is open to the public and has been well preserved. Even the machinery in the silk reeling plant is as it was when it closed three decades ago. So now we are inside the silk reeling plant. This factory was used to reel the silk from the cocoons. And we have all the machines that were used here until 1987, the year when the Tomioka silk mill stopped uh, production. In the early Meiji era, when Japan changed from an isolated feudal country to a modern one, the government turned to France for silk making expertise and high tech machinery. That know how evolved into workers perfecting the skills needed to make raw silk, an extremely difficult task for a commodity in high demand worldwide. It was silk that made Japan great. Before mass production, Japanese silk was a luxury good worldwide. And after, it became more affordable, still at incredible quality. Japan led the silk industry for 115 years. The high-tech machinery here imported from Europe marked the start of Japan's desire for state-of-the-art technology and fueled a desire to be at the top. Make Japan great again with silk? These creatures are silkworms nibbling on special nutrition bars. They're extremely delicate and hard to cultivate from egg to cocoon, but Japanese workers were good at it, really good at it. Why was the mill here? It had coal to power the machines, close enough to the port of Yokohama, had a river with clean water, and was cool enough to cultivate the eggs thanks to the Arafune cold storage. This is the reason why the silk industry thrived here, because they had a place like this where they could keep it cool even in the hottest of days in the summer. Even in August, the temperatures are cool here, which allowed an increase in the number of breeding seasons and more cocoon production. Inside these holes were buildings that housed silkworm cocoons from over 40 prefectures in Japan, the largest site in the country. These days, the silkworms are now important to the town in another way. With the mill becoming a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2014, the silkworm is back. This shop sells them, but not how you'd expect. Wow. Oh, what is this? Surprise present. Oh, no. The silkworm chocolate is a popular gift. Locally made chocolate that really does look like the real thing.
how could I not buy some? Green tea chocolate flavored leaf and cookies and cream tasting worm cocooned in a wrapper to keep it fresh. The street in front of the mill has a lot of shops selling silkworm confections. This one with sweet red bean azuki paste inside. Here are the real silkworm cocoons, and it makes you wonder how the quality of the silk was here in Tomioka. In the 19th and early 20th century, Tomioka produced the best raw silk in the world. The Tomioka brand was well known. At the mill office, I was shown some real high quality silk made in the town. Inazuka-san is in charge of the Tomioka silk brand. To compare, I brought my own assumed to be silk items purchased from the internet to see if it was real. I asked Inazuka-san to close her eyes before her silk analysis. <laughs> it's all I could find, but was it silk? I asked Inazuka-san to help me investigate the item. It only cost me $10, so of course I was suspicious. After a close examination, it was ruled not silk, an imposter. And after feeling the real deal, it was easy to know why. Real silk just feels really, really good. When you touch it, you know. It's smooth, it's cool, it's silk. Silk production here is limited these days, but the quality is still high. If it's not, it probably isn't real silk. The Tomioka silk mill almost failed from the start because of a terrible misunderstanding between the Japanese and French cultures. When the mill was constructed, there weren't any foreigners here, and when the French came, they brought the silk machines and red wine. Paul Bruna was the engineer on the ground. The task to hire the workers for the mill became impossible when the locals believed that he was... Is it true? Are you vampires? A blood-sucking vampire. I mean, no one had ever seen red wine drunk from a glass like this. It looked like blood. The misunderstanding led to no one wanting to work for the bloodthirsty French mill until the mill's Japanese head manager hired his own 14-year-old daughter to a position. Quickly, the myth of blood-sucking foreigners was dispelled. The story is one of the favorites to tell at the mill. Nearby is Shimonita, nicknamed Retro Town, because it hasn't changed much in a long time. When the mill closed, the local economy shrunk, and what has been left behind is a snapshot of Japan from decades ago. It's a real treat to walk the streets here and see what Japan used to look like. This one here? Hi. Uh, Shimonita okay. is famous for its sauce-flavored breaded pork cutlets, and I was taken to Kiyoshiya Shokudo for a massive Shionita Katsudon lunch. The inside hasn't changed much, like the town. While waiting for lunch to arrive, I got a chance to ask Suzuki-san about Shimonita's retro town name. で、そこがなんかそのまんま新しくね、綺麗になるのもいいことなんですけど、でもそのまんまの昭和の賑やかだった時代の風景を残しているはい。This is the Shimonita Katsudon. Locally made breaded pork cutlets with sauce on rice. All of the shops in Shimonita have incredibly delicious foods. So good. <laughs> Here's how he makes the pork tender. 
It's tenderized like this since the shop opened decades ago. And that's the Shimonita Katsudon experience. The area is also famous for konyaku, a rubbery jello food that is used in a lot of Japanese cuisine. It's made from the konjak potato, and it takes the flavor of the sauce or ingredients around it. What an amazing adventure we had today. It was like taking a trip back in the time. So if you're interested in learning where Japan came from and what makes it the country it is today, make the trip to Jobu Silk Road in Tomioka. Next time, welcome to Obama City, Japan known as a fishing town with amazing food and beautiful sunsets. And in 2008, when a man with the same name became president of the United States. That relationship is, well, a little weird. We'll spend a couple of days in this unique town on the Sea of Japan. If you liked it, hit that subscribe